Hi, my name is Grant Hobson. I work as a finance analyst. Uh, today I'm going to talk you through some business maths uh, calculations and ratios. How to calculate overtime. Um, this calculation is useful from both business and personal perspective. So from business perspective, if we're a production company who's had problems on the line during the week, we have to run um, additional lines on a night shift or at the weekend to catch up the production. We're going to have additional labour costs um, and that's so that's deemed the overtime and that's often at a more expensive rate than we normally pay because we're getting people to work over their, um, their contracted hours. Uh, from the personal perspective as well, if you're looking for a bit of extra income in the month, um, you can determine how many hours you want to work at work extra at what rate um, to get that required income. We'll follow that through on a calculation now just to demonstrate how it works. Okay, so there's several steps in, uh, in calculating the overtime. So we want to determine the regular hours, the contracted hours that we've got. And there's obviously employment law which determines how many we can work. Um, so that needs to be considered. Um, determine your hourly rate. So we'd have the regular rate, but then a lot of extra work, say it's midweek in the evenings, is done at time and a half. Or at the weekends, it's usually double time, so we need to get the rates that, for the hours that we're working. So then we need to find the difference between the hours worked and what our regular hours are, and then whatever, yeah, so whatever hours, um, the, whatever rate for them hours. So if we say um, a person works 40 hours and they've got a rate of £12.50. So, so now we're going to calculate um, the overtime work by a particular person. You see that we've got four weeks to represent the month's work. Um, so we'll say in week one, the person worked 44 hours. In week two, 42 hours. Week three, 40 hours. And week four was 48 hours. So week three, we actually worked the contracted hours, so there'll be no overtime pay there. But the rest of the weeks, we need to calculate what we um, should be getting paid overtime. So we do this by week one, we calculate the difference. So it equals. 44 minus your 40 hours, so you've done four hours overtime. So we just need to repeat this down now for the rest of the weeks. So two hours in week two, we said zero hours in week three. But then in the final week, we worked eight hours additional. Now, what we're going to say is for week one, this was overtime that we did during the week. So for example, a Monday to Friday, we did an hour extra a night. So that rate is going to be at a time and a half. So at 1.5. 1 1 week two, again, was just midweek at time and a half. So 1.5 is the rate increase. Zero in week three because there was no overtime. Now week four, we're going to say these eight hours were at a weekend. So we came into the Saturday shift and we want double time for that. So the rate increase is going to be times two. So these calculations have taken place here where you've got your rate of £12.50 times by your rate increase £1.50. And that's just followed all the way down. So to get your total overtime pay, we simply want your rate times by your overtime hours. So your rate times by your overtime an extra £75 week one and we just copy this formula down so in the final week we've got £200 overtime because we've worked extra eight hours at double rate so that's £25 which means that in the month we've got a total uh, overtime pay of £312.50 which obviously um, amounts to come off that in terms of your net pay but so this would be the gross overtime pay and from a company's perspective you'd be looking to see how much this overtime is costing you because if you've been inefficient in your production process you've had to get an extra shift of say 10 people on it um, to catch up for misproduction in that month you've got the same rates and the same hours so for your 10 people of your shift for the company it's worth £3,000 which shouldn't have been a cost to them